welcome back to the bench. And yeah, we have some more royalty on the bench. The Studio Electronics SE1. Now, this has actually been here before. Um, and a couple of other people have tried to scale the oscillators to make them uh, in pitch over large octaves. Um, all attempts have failed. And I think now it's actually uh, a repair job. So we're going to have a look, see what's inside. We can see it's digitally controlled, so there's going to be a big confuser in there. Um, and I don't know if you remember from the last video with the Roland MKS-80, that had some bad electrolytic capacitors, which was affecting the tuning. So we're going to take a closer look at any electrolytics that's on board here. So there we can see inside. Uh, there's a switch mode power supply. Could um, be a potential problem. And the caps look bulgy or anything. And this is the, uh, looks like there's a board underneath here as well. Um, oscillator. So this is, yeah, oscillator trimming pot. So this is where we tried to uh, scale the oscillators in the past. Um, so I think this whole top board is analog. VCA section is over here. So I'm guessing we have the filter section. Um, be interesting to see if we can find where the noise, uh, the envelope section is. There's the noise around here. Ring mod. It's quite nicely labelled, and there's only the output jack and this one ribbon coming to this top board, so power must be coming from this cable here. Here we can see a couple of uh, capacitors for filtering, I guess, on the main voltage input. Um, and in the oscillator section, there's a couple of capacitors here. So, it's very interesting to uh, have a look at those. So let's take this board out. Very classical, old school design with the top layer uh, traces all going horizontally. And on the back, we have more vertical traces. Um, shame that wasn't on a socket. Yeah, we can see we have the digital section down here. There's the main micro confuser. Uh, we have an EEPROM. Not, don't like the idea of that not being covered. I don't know why. It probably won't make any difference, but it uh, makes me feel better. So, um, so, yeah, power comes into the board here. Uh, there's some filter caps. Um, coming in here, they look okay, and there's no obvious bulging caps here on the digital board, but I don't think the problem's on the digital board. And then we have the analog board, and a uh, little add on here, not quite sure. Ah, it's a vintage filter modification by the looks of it. Interesting. So first I'm interested in these main bypass caps that come in through the power. And, uh, oh dear. Okay, I'm going to have to get the microscope out. Okay, so this is the bottom one of those caps. You can see it's uh, definitely been leaking. There's all residue around the outside. The screen print has um, disappeared at the bottom here. You can see all the chemical reactions. Now, also, I don't know if you can see, it's like left a puddle where it's been leaking all over the board. So, we'll have to see what this looks like after a clean-up. We can see the normal colour of the traces but around the area 
especially underneath this diode. In fact, you can see the trace turned a different colour. So, we're going to have to take this diode out and um, just have a clean up and see how far we can get with cleaning up that trace. May even have to re repair the trace, although the unit works. So, we'll have to see. I can't quite focus. And that's one side. And, oof. We can see the same. And you can see all the... There should not be green around those pads. And if we take a look on the capacitors which are feeding the oscillator section... Uh, Yeah, we can see the same thing on this capacitor. Again, you can see the silk screen on the outside has been eaten away. Um, you can see how it's made a puddle as well, so down to this resistor. So I'm going to have to take out that cap as well. There's another cap here. Again, not quite as a bad state as the other ones. The silk screen is still intact a bit down the bottom. Not perfectly. But um, that's definitely corroded. Although this one hasn't spilt its guts everywhere. Let's take a look at another cap. Oh dear. I mean, they all, the, all these caps are starting to go. Okay, there we have one that looks pretty clean. It's definitely not as bad as the others. And there's no bubbling on the on the cap there. So this was uh, a trace which had a load of bad copper, so I'm using a fiberglass pencil just to see if I can clean up that trace enough. Um, caps back in cleaned up as best as I can I also changed this cap behind this voltage regulator it was quite close to it so um, I thought it wouldn't harm just to take that out put a new one in so uh, let's get this back into its case I tried to film the calibration process but I found it too difficult but I, there are some bits of video that give you an idea of what happened and in actual fact now those caps really did stabilise the oscillators a great deal so the calibration was actually really easy. <laughs> 